Welcome to Innovation. Today we are going to look at doing some animation with our cat and getting our cat or our character, whatever you choose, to move around the screen. So I'm going to click sign in and use my username and password. If I forgot my username and password, I can click on need help, put in the email address I used to set up the account, or put in my username and click send me the password reset link and I can reset the password. So let me sign in here. I can know that I'm signed in because it has my picture up here and my username. So I always want to make sure I see that. Then I'm going to click on create and we're going to create a new project. So I'm going to start with my cat and then I'm going to find a backdrop that I want my cat to be performing on. So I'm going to use this choose a backdrop search icon and it will find a backdrop for me. So how about I put my cat in space? I like that idea. Then I'm going to click on events and get when green flag clicked because this is usually the event that starts everything. We should have an event when green flag clicked. And we went over this in last episode, but we want to make sure that our character has a rotation style of left, right. So I'm going to click on the motion, which is this blue circle up here and scroll down till I see set rotation style left, right. And I drag that and connect that to when green flag clicked. Next thing I want to do is set up another event. And this time it's going to be triggered on a key that I press a keyboard key. And I'm actually going to do four of them. So one, two, three, four. And again, I'm getting that from the events circle. And I'm going to change it to these letters. I'm going to use the letter A. I'm going to use the letter D. I'm going to use the letter W way down here. And then I'm going to use the letter X. So these letters <clears throat> are letters on the keyboard that typically are used to control things in video games. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the cat to point in the correct direction when I press the A and the D key. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to get the point in direction block. And when I press the A key, I want the cat to point to the left. So I move my arrow to the left. When I press the D key, I want my cat to point to the right and I can see that it already is pointed to the right. Next thing I want to do is get my cat to get to move its feet. If I click on costumes, I can see that the cat has two different costumes. When I flip back and forth between the two different costumes, it looks like the cat is moving. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create another kind of event. It requires two blocks, a broadcast block, and when I receive message block. So I'm going to create a new message. So I'm going to click on this message block here and type in a new message by clicking new message. And the new message I'm going to type in is animate. You can use any word you want, but I'm going to type animate, A-N-I-M-A-T-E. And I'm going to connect the animate to when A is pressed. Next thing I'm going to do is build something here that will animate my cat. So I have to make sure when I select when I receive animate is chosen from the drop down box. Then I'm going to put in a little repeat loop because I want to do this a couple times and the cat has four costumes so excuse me two costumes so I want to do this four times 
I want to go to my looks and get the cat to go to the next costume. Now, when I do this, because the computer works really, really fast, it's going to move so fast, I won't see the animation happen. So I need to slow it down a little bit. So I'm going to go in and put in control, which is right here, which is where I found the repeat loop under control, which is the one, two, three, four, fifth circle down. It says control. It's kind of RNG. And I'm going to put in a weight after the next costume. I'm going to set that to 0.1 seconds. So let's see if when I press the A key, the cat turns to the left and moves his feet. Green flag first. And look at that. Every time I press the A, he turns to the left and moves his feet. So now I'm going to do the same thing with D. I want to animate that. Fortunately, I don't have to recreate all this block down here. I already created it. All I have to do is use another broadcast. So again, I'm going to go to events, find a broadcast message, and broadcast animate. So now when I press to the right, he moves his feet. He doesn't actually move though. We're going to have to fix that. I'm going to do the same thing with W and X, but they're going up and down, so I don't really need to change the direction the cat is facing. I'm just going to broadcast the animate message. Broadcast, animate, broadcast, animate. So whenever I press any of these buttons, the cat does his little dance. If I'm pressing A and D, he's switching directions, looking to the left or the right. Next step is to get the cat to move. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to change the X value and the Y value. So I want to find a block that says change X by and then a block that says change Y by. So I'm going to use the change X by when the X key, when the A key is pressed. And I want it to go backwards. So I'm going to put in a minus sign. And on a number line, the minus sign means go to the left. I want to make the D go to the right. So I'm going to use a positive sign. Now you could use 10 and negative 10, or you could use a different size number if you want to make them move further, or smaller number if you want to make them move slower. Then for the W and X buttons, I'm going to use the change Y by 10 and that it will make it go up and then the change Y by negative 10 to make it go down. Now I'd make these all this, you know, the same value tens. I wouldn't make one a 10 and one a five and one a two because the cat will move weird. So let's see what we have now and see if we can get our cat to move green flag. I'm pressing the A key. Oh, and he moves to the left. The D key, and he moves to the right. I press the W key, and he goes up. And I press the X key, and he goes down. So there we have our cat animated to move all across the screen. So now that we have our cat able to move left, right, up, and down on the screen, I want to add something a little extra special to this. I want to get our cat to move in three dimensions. So I'm going to first change the backdrop that looks a little bit more three dimensional. So I click on the backdrop button and I am going to look for this, the Greek Colosseum. Then I'm going to set some things up so my cat has a good place to start. So I'm going to go back to my when green flag clicked and I'm going to send my cat to a starting point that is 30 and negative 54. Now, in order to get my cat to look like he is moving in three dimensions, I have to change the cat's size. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to change here. There's two blocks for changing size. One is change size by the other one is set size two. 
So we want to start with set size 2. I'm going to set the size to 260%. Now you could change the number if you want, but I kind of like that. It gives me a nice big cat. And you can change where the starting point is, but we want to make sure it looks like he's close to the camera. Remember we talked about this idea back in season 1 about forced perspective? Well, this is an example of forced perspective. So now I'm going to get my cat to run up and down the stairs and all around the Colosseum. To do that, first thing I have to do is I can't use the same up and down controls I did before. So I'm going to just disconnect this and disconnect this. So that way if I decide to put it back, I can. I don't need to delete it. I'm just going to disconnect it and just leave it sitting there. Then I'm going to add in two more events. So when the Z key is pressed, and another one, when the E key is pressed. Okay, so I'm going to do um, some things to make it look like my cat is moving around, but I still want to broadcast my animate. So I'm going to broadcast animate so his feet still move. Then I'm going to go back to that looks option and find this time change size by. So I'm going to change the size by 10 for the Z direction, which will make him get bigger. And I still have to make him move, but to make him move, I have to move him on a diagonal line, which is what's called a vanishing point. So to move him in a diagonal line, I have to change the X value and the Y value. I have to change both. And I'm going to get those values to change by minus 10. And that'll move him in the right direction. Or her. Who knows? Then I'm going to go and click on looks again and do the same thing. Only this time when I change the size, the change size block, I'm going to do it minus 10 for the E. And when I change the X and Y, so that's under motion, change the X by 10 and change the y by 10. So see how these are opposites? This is negative, this is positive, this is positive, this is negative. So now when I do this little project here and hit my green flag, I can get my cat and use the rut buttons here to run up the stairs. I might, probably should have it facing the other way. He's running up the stairs. And then I can get him to run across the top Looks like he's running across the top. And then using Z key, I can get him to run back down the stairs. So now we have animated our cat in 3D. <clears throat> so I think that's pretty cool. Next step, last step, is we have to make sure we title our project. And we're going to call this running cat. 3D. And we have to make sure we share our project. Always make sure you share your project. Make sure you're signed in too. It's a good idea to check that every once in a while to see that you're signed in. So we're going to click share. My project is shared. I want to give some directions. Um, press green flag to start. Use W to go up. X to go down. Whoops, that's not right. We changed that. Now we're going to use Z to go down and E to go up, A and D to go left and right. Now, you can also write some notes and credits that I made this for innovation. And when you're ready, you can click on copy link, click on copy link again, and that link is copied and you can now share this on Canvas or in an email or in Seesaw, wherever your teacher asks you to share it. That's all for me. Bye for now.